Hello and welcome to this episode of Altitude. We have an incredible show lined up for you. Just remember, Altitude is about you. It's for high school students and re-entering adults looking at science, technology, engineering, the arts, and mathematics as potential careers or lifestyles or pursuing education. On our show today, we have Bailey and we have Nia. And Bailey is a civil engineer. She has done an incredible work in the community and we look forward to her interview coming up very soon. And we also have Miss Nia Page who has just come back from uh, camp, business camp, as well as participated in a camp with a purpose over at Progressive Baptist Church all summer. So we're excited to hear what the energy that she's generating out of that particular STEM camp really uh, resulted in. Uh, thank you again and we look forward to our next guest. Hi, welcome to this episode of Altitude. With me I have Bailey Hadnot. Bailey is a civil engineer. Welcome to the show, Bailey. How thank are you, you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Fantastic, fantastic. So thank you for taking your time out yeah. of your busy schedule. No problem. I know with the, the Twin Cities traffic, it's hard to get from uh, those far out engineering companies <laughs> to get over to see us here in St. Paul at SPNN Studios, so we appreciate it. Mm -hmm. So Bailey, you know, today's show is really focused in on youth and high school students and mm -hmm. maybe some returning uh, adults back to the work world. And okay. so our goal is to find out a little bit about you and to understand what is the career, your education, your lifestyle. Okay. So why don't we start off by talking a little bit about your education. Mm -hmm. Start from the beginning. Okay. Um, I'm a civil engineer by trade. I went to University of Iowa in Iowa oh. City for five years uh, to get my engineering degree in 2011. Um, during that time, I did a couple internships, co-ops, and then ended up um, in Minneapolis for my first full-time job at Bar Engineering. Wow. So, yeah. Very prestigious uh, company. Oh, thanks, yeah. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> so, at, at Bar, what do you do at Bar? So, my, my title is Environmental Engineer. Mm -hmm. um, we have a business unit called Assessment and Remediation, mm -hmm. which means we assess situations that are contaminated, like contaminated sites for soil, um, mm -hmm. contaminated drinking water, oh. wastewater, mm -hmm. um, air pollution, and then we work with our clients to solve those problems. So remediating things like lead in your water, or um, solids in your air, or maybe a contaminant in your soil. We help them design solutions to remove those from their um, systems or properties. Wow, that's really cool. That's yeah. really important work too, especially yeah. in light of all the major issues we've had in Flint, Michigan with the yep. water crisis and yep. what, I, what we've learned beyond that in the South and all across the United States mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in the pockets of areas. So mm -hmm. looping back to education, did you always want to go into civil engineering and do what you're doing now? Or how did you get from, you know, young Bailey to being <laughs> where you're at now? Yeah. So young Bailey was a tree hugger is what I like to call her. Tree hugger. Yes. Oh, I haven't heard that in a long time. That's my, what are you doing using yeah. my dad? That's my generation. Yeah. It's, that's what my mom called me when I was a kid. Okay. I was very adamant about recycling and like Ooh. picking up trash on the street and okay. like sea animals. Um, and Ooh. originally young Bailey wanted to be a marine biologist and okay. work with like dolphins and train dolphins and work with like water animals. Uh-huh. That didn't didn't pan out, um, so then I ended up taking a class in high school called Engineering Physics, hmm. and that was the first time it was offered at my high school. Um, I went to mostly black high school in Chicago, so okay. it wasn't very common. Took that class and I loved it. I loved working with my hands and like building things and asking questions, wow. all that stuff. Um, then I did that for a semester, and I was like, okay, now I'm going to be an engineer. That's just I decided that from that class. And then I applied to a couple schools. Um, got some scholarships and ended up at Iowa for an engineering degree. That's and then within fantastic. that, um, you could do like civil engineering, biomedical engineering, mm -hmm. mechanical engineering, and I chose civil. And then that was also environmental at the same time. Sure. So that's what I so ended you're, up doing. So you're telling me you're more than a hard hat and a shovel, right? Yes, it's, I'm more than a hard hat <laughs> that is a, and a shovel. That, I have learned that stereotype, that generalization. You're more yes. than a hard hat and a shovel. I do have a hard hat and a shovel, but it's not <laughs> all I am. I do more than just that. So. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I know I ran into uh, a good friend of mine is actually with the Conservation Corps. She's on the board. Yeah. Uh -huh. And I know that uh, that was one of the terms that came up. She didn't say it, and you know, we'll have to strike that from the show. But yeah. uh, it was actually hilarious. Everybody started 
chuckling, more like, oh, except me. <laughs> Not me. So, no. wow, so you're telling me you came off of the mean streets of Chicago, <laughs> hugging trees that. and the green effect, you know, yeah. and recycling, and yeah. then all the way to here in Minnesota with your degrees mm -hmm. and being able to make a difference on society through the work that you do. I hope so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. no, that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, one, one other thing will stick around the career aspect of it is being African-American female. Mm -hmm. And I, had, I don't believe I had even been awakened to the fact that there were black civil engineers. Because in my mind, they, you know, I was always seeing people in ditches and hard hats and shovels, <laughs> right? And they were usually yeah. male. They were usually Caucasian. Yes. And they, um, it just was a thing, right? Yeah. So tell us a little bit about how you adapted to working in your career and were there any things you can share with our audience that, you know, be prepared for um, communication or anything? Anything. Yeah, it's sure. wide open. Yeah. Sure. Um, so I, was, I went to Iowa, obviously, for school, mm -hmm. and that's a predominantly white institution, PWI, mm -hmm. which most people know. Um, and there was one other black engineer who was a woman who was also a civil engineer. Mm. So there was two of us out of a class wow. of like 200 people. That was my first culture shock within engineering of like, okay, maybe this isn't for me, maybe I can't see someone who looks like me in this process, maybe I shouldn't go all the way. Mm -hmm. Those are my first thoughts when I first got to college. Um, and then from there, I just kind of got used to it, mm -hmm. honestly. It became the norm of being the one person of color in your class, the mm -hmm. one person of color at office hours. It just became the reality that mm -hmm. I face every day. And then that prepared me for my job now, which I'm the only black engineer at my company, mm -hmm. female. Mm -hmm. or any any gender honestly so wow. it's just preparing for the reality i know it's not a great reality but mm -hmm. that experience in college prepared me for the, the real world so to speak and how to sure. navigate that so and i can i can relate to that from the male side of it and being from even from here but you've done some pretty incredible things to make a change in that particular arena too and if we'll talk a little bit about i think when we actually first met, it was either at the uh, Minneapolis STEM Expo or it was at Minneapolis North. Mm -hmm. And I know you were there with an organization. Uh, mm -hmm. You can share that organization. Mm -hmm. But what you were trying to do at North, um, and also too, I know that you've worked, you, you are in a group of other female engineers and IT technologists and mm -hmm. practitioners are trying to make a change, creating a pathway for more um, persons of color, female, young women of color. Mm -hmm. So you could, can you share a little bit about your work in that particular space? Yeah, sure. So in my free time, I'm not being an engineer, um, I help with a robotics team at Hiawatha High School. Mm -hmm. I go for the Robo Lobos. Lobos right. is wolf in Spanish. Um, I know. So <laughs> My uncle well, yeah, goes by go. El Lobo, yeah. There you go. That's I funny. have many years of Spanish, although yeah. I can't speak a lick now. <laughs> but okay. Anyway. So um, I'm like a, I'm a co-coach of that team. Mm -hmm. And they started about two years ago. It's mostly Hispanic and um, black high school. So we mm -hmm. help them and I volunteer twice a week, three times a week, and just coach them with like project management skills, how to build things, how to plan for your strategy of like how you're gonna make your robot, um, team coordination, team building. Mm -hmm. I help with that aspect of things. And then we have engineers from Minnesota or U of M that come in and teach them about like mechanics of, mm -hmm. Um, voltage and circuits and programming mm -hmm. and all those great things that I don't really do but I can help with like the management side of things mm -hmm. and then I also see myself as like a model for those students in those classes that maybe have not Absolutely. seen black engineers or engineers of color at all and maybe like have a model for them to to look up to yeah so. and tell us a little bit about the organization that you belong to and been a leader in. yes so it's called Nash Type Black Engineers or NSBE for short mm -hmm. um, I got involved in them when I was first in college mm -hmm. I joined them in my sophomore year to find that community and that tribe of people that were having the experience that I had of being in a person of color in your degree in your class mm -hmm. and you're the only one so I joined NSBE um, my sophomore year and then I rose up to the ranks to be the president of NSBE for about two years when I was in college on the collegiate chapter and once I moved here I became involved with NSBE Twin Cities professionals and then also became the programs chair of that organization mm -hmm. where I help run the robotics team and help do mentoring programs at the University of Minnesota mm -hmm. and also helped with um, professional development events for our members. Fantastic. So, yeah. That's wonderful. Thanks. <laughs> and then I think one of the most recent ventures that you have is with the Minnesota STEM Partnership and mm -hmm. the Women in STEAM. Share a little mm -hmm. bit about 
what you think the expectations and the goals are going to happen there. Yeah. yeah. So, you're, I mean, you're, you're, the, you're in charge of it. So, well, <laughs> from, you're my guest, though, so I have to defer true. to you. So. But, so, from my understanding, I just know that I have been called um, a unicorn of sorts because I'm a mm. black engineer mm -hmm. in STEM and I'm a rarity in that field. Yeah. Um, and my, my job within that group is to raise awareness of mm. who can apply to a scholarship called Aspirations, I believe, that, mm -hmm. and then that gives them a pathway towards success. Yeah. That's how I understand it. Yeah, no, that's, that's perfect. Okay. And try and identify uh, women of color in particular, right. yes. young women of color mm -hmm. from various high schools. Mm -hmm. And by the way, if there's any young ladies of color out there, I got the camera. <laughs> young ladies of color, be sure that you apply to aspirations.minnesotastempartnership.org. So shameless plug, you're right in the middle of your interview. <laughs> no, how horrible no problem. So, but the most important thing that you're doing, I think, is actually reaching back to those young ladies. Mm -hmm. And when we first met, we were at Minneapolis, well, when we met in that, in that arena, mm -hmm. was with an organization, I think, Sisters in Technology. Yes. And mm -hmm. you, were, you came in to speak with them mm -hmm. and help coach them and, and have worked with them, yeah. you and the Nes local Nesby chapter. Mm -hmm. Yep. So we applaud you for all of your hard work. Thank you. Yeah. I think it's, it's really important. It's necessary to do, because I didn't have that done for me, mm -hmm. and I would have liked that. And I think it's really just important to do that for the people behind me. So let's just doors. stay in that <laughs> one particular area. So if, if uh, I'm a young female uh, woman mm -hmm. in high school mm -hmm. and I see you come into my classroom, I don't know you, I've never met you, you know, I might have seen you in the hallway, what should I do to reach out to you? I mean, is it okay if I just say, hey, I don't know anything, would you teach me? Or Share a little bit about how approachable you are and mm. what you would give advice to a young woman. Gotcha. Like, here's this big engineer. You know, <laughs> oh, I can't speak to them. Oh, no, no, it's fine. Um, so I've had people ask for business cards. That's like usually a good tool that I've mm -hmm. had high school kids or high school students do. Mm -hmm. um, they just said, hey, like, I have questions about your job or I have questions about how you got to where you are. Mm -hmm. Can I email you or can I call you? And I've given them out, but no one has really followed up. Uh -huh. So I would say if you ask for a business card, for sure follow up and send them an email or if they have LinkedIn, anything like that. Yeah. It's for sure, it's, it's a big ticket because it's not really um, common for a person in a professional world to kind of reach back to students and then them to follow up. So exactly. And that's can why stick out. the work you're doing is just incredible. Yeah. So here we have Bailey, civil engineer, making all this wonderful money now that she's <laughs> in her career. So we're going we're gonna to pass on the education, the career, and talk about some of the fun things real briefly before we wrap up. Okay. So, so what does Bailey do to have fun? I mean, what do you do with all your money? All my money? What money? <laughs> um, so I have student loans, first of all. That's where a lot of my money uh -oh. goes, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. um, when I'm not paying student loans, um, I like to travel. Okay. I went to Scotland recently in May really? to visit a friend. Did you see anybody in the little kilts? I did. Did you? Yeah, yeah it was great. It was cool. so fun. Yeah. So I love traveling. I'm going to Hawaii in November and then going to Cabo in December to get out of the winter here. So that'll be great. Um, I like to do outside things. Mm -hmm. I'm really into like camping, okay. biking, hiking. Uh, Minneapolis has great breweries. So I just like go to a bunch of breweries and try a bunch of beer. Um, not a bunch of beer, a good amount of beer. <laughs> <laughs> the appropriate amount based on your height, weight, exactly. and all the scientific measurements. All the dimensions right? that you uh, need. We're going to have to edit that out of this particular <laughs> segment. You know, we do high school kids. Yes. No, just yes. kidding. But, breweries, uh, food trucks, festivals. Um, yesterday they were, they were showing a movie in the park at U.S. Bank Stadium. I just did that with my boyfriend. Yeah. Just like yeah. being outside in the summer is my favorite thing to do because it gets long winters here. And the winter, um, skiing, snowboarding. I haven't tried ice fishing, but I'm going to try ice fishing. Okay. Um, more camping in like cabins. So and really anything. Hey. And a lot of cooking too. Yeah. I like to cook a lot. So yeah. yeah. And Minnesota has such a great terrain and yeah. weather ecosystem for exactly. us to be able to enjoy all, all those things. things. Yeah. I used to be a big camper, but then the mosquito <laughs> came and landed and carried me away. So <laughs> one I mosquito. Yeah, one mosquito. <laughs> <laughs> so it's Bailey, fun. thank you so much. This yeah. has been a truly enjoyable interview yeah. and I thank you for sharing your, your career, your education, and your lifestyle with us on this Absolutely. episode of Altitude. Thank yeah. you for no joining problem. us. No problem. Thank you. All right. And with me is Nia Page. How are you doing, Nia? I'm good. How about yourself? I'm doing wonderful. Hey, I heard that you've had a busy summer and you just got back from another camp. So I thank you for hopping out of one activity and then coming to the studios of SPNN to join us here to talk a little about you. Mm -hmm. So Nia, as you, 
Uh, no, this show is really designed for students like you and your age level and um, future and career, right? So we want to create content that will help other students kind of decide where they may want to go. Sometimes they're undecided, sometimes they know, but they might like what you're talking about. So we're going to share that with a lot of people after we get done recording this. Is that okay? Yeah. All right, fantastic. So we stay and talk about your education, we talk about maybe what you want to do in the future, in a career or a job, um, and we also talk a little about lifestyle. So I know we have a lot of things to cover and talk about, so uh, I appreciate you taking your time here. So education, where do you go to school at? Woodbury High School. Woodbury? All right, fantastic. And what is your favorite activity at Woodbury High School? Are you in extra, extracurricular activities, or tell us a little bit about what you do. Um, I play basketball and okay. I like track. And I might be interested in golf, but still a maybe. The golf is a maybe, but yeah, you still have the rest of the summer to, to keep keep working on that, right? Mm -hmm. And there's also indoor golf, so you got year round. Mm -hmm. So golf, that's pretty amazing. Um, and well-rounded, must I say, too, because I hit golf balls that go into the water, into the sand trap, and stay on the tee sometimes. So mm -hmm. you might have to show me a few, uh, few golf swings. So. In your high school, you have a lot of other activities that go on, but um, the realm of science, technology, engineering, and math, or they call it STEM, and then they throw in the arts, right, for STEAM. Mm -hmm. And so this summer you had and participated in a camp with a purpose at Progressive Baptist Church. And I know that they had an incredible number of variety of activities that, that a lot of students went through. So we're going to talk a little bit about that from an education perspective. Um, and also, too, I think you had, uh, pre you're pretty competitive from what I remember. Yeah. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. That'll be the punchline when we get done. Okay. Um, tell us about maybe one of the favorite activities that you had while you were at camp, or talk about that camp with a purpose a little bit. I remember we did, like, a Lego activity. I remember doing, making a game on the computer, mm -hmm. and I think my favorite was flying drones. Flying drones. I bet it was. So let's talk about robotics first. So. Uh, you use the term Lego, so uh, you had an opportunity to ex be exposed to the EV3 or the Mindstorm platform and be able to program your robot. Did you find that to be hard or easy? Because I've always been interested to ask, but you know, we're going to tell the whole public now. So yeah. was it hard or easy? Well, I've had experience with building like things like that before. Okay. So in my perspective, it was si simple. Not a problem. Mm -hmm. All right. So tell us about the gaming then. What did you do with the game design uh, so sessions? We built this, like, it was a game where you just hit the ball off of the, the bat and then you try to hit all the blocks. But it was a lot more difficult once you actually played the game. And then we had the opportunity to make our own game also. And I tried to make Pac-Man, Pac which was kind of hard. It was a lot more difficult than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, mm -hmm. but not too difficult, right? If somebody wanted to pursue gaming, that's probably a great way to get started. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and especially game development. It wasn't, yeah, I was impressed that it wasn't just about playing games. Like, you were building the games. You weren't, like, just, you know, spending hours doing that. Mm -hmm. um, and then drone racing you had mentioned. So tell us a little bit about why you like drone racing or t what you learned about drones, drone um, flying. I think my favorite part was um, being able to compete because on Monday, we started on Monday, we ended on Friday. On Monday, I said I was going to win. And I kept practicing Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. We went through the courses, and I won on Friday. Yeah, you sure did. And uh, we're very proud of you, too, because you set a goal, you stuck with that goal, and uh, you accomplished that goal. So that's very impressive. And uh, for advice for other young people out there, um, as it related to robotics, was there Anything that you learned about maybe future career in robotics that you might want to share? Um, was there any relevance to like how the robots work and why they do the things that they do that you've seen now after having taken that course? Um, I could say for when we had like the Lego activity, it was like at first I thought when you want to go left, you have to put left, but you actually have to put right. But it might have been inverted, I'm not sure. But it was a lot different than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be simple, just right, left, right, left, straight. Mm -hmm. But for the drones, it was like you had to use your fingers in a way you didn't use them before. You had to move it up and down and back and like s slow and fast before mm -hmm. you could hit the ceiling or crash really hard. Exactly. And uh, 
Any advice on any careers or any thoughts that people can pursue with drone racing? I mean, do you see it more than just gaming or do you see it as just having fun? Um, I see it both ways. Like, if you really want to get into IT and you want to pursue it, um, so my advice I could say is go for what you want. Don't dream too big. I mean, don't dream too, don't dream too small. You can mm -hmm. dream as big as you want and accomplish anything you want. You just have to stick with it and set a goal and accomplish it. That's wonderful, wonderful advice. So let's talk a little bit about now that you're building all these, um, the, amassing all these skills. So have you thought about college? Because tell me again, what grade are you in? I'm going to 10th grade. You're going in 10th grade. So have you given college much thought? I have. I've been in AVID since I was in 7th grade. I've visited colleges. Um, my mom took me to Spelman, the college she went to when I was in third grade. So I've okay. been going to colleges since I was little. Checking them out. All right, mm -hmm. fantastic. Do you have any particular area of expertise that you want to get into when you go to college? Um, I have a big variety, but I've always wanted to go into the medical field. Um, in middle school, I started getting interested in law, and then I started doing codings, and I did BDPA, and I okay. did, so I started getting sort of interested into IT, and I just went to a business camp, so now it's like I'm all over the place. You're all over the place, but good thing is you have a couple of years to kind of narrow that scope. Mm -hmm. Yep, and also keep building your, honing your craft. You know, you're doing coding, you obviously now are drone racing, doing some things with you know, robotics, hopefully you'll join the progressive robotics team, and then uh, all the other wealth of things that you're doing. And the competitive nature that you have with being in sports, it sounds like you're very disciplined and very orderly and focused on what you want to do and accomplish. So for other young people that may not have as much um, focus in what they want to do or maybe don't know all the options, um, you have, uh, you had mentioned at one point in time, maybe psychology or something like that. Um, if you had to pick one of those options, which one would you actually pick? I think if today you were a senior and you had to say go, what would you pick for a education option today? I think I would pick psychology because I like to help other people, even though I like to do things on my own sometimes. I like to help others because mm -hmm. I can see the difference and I can make a difference. Yeah. Yeah. You sound like a very wonderful young lady being able to help and provide, you know, uh, a balance, a very technical. And do you do anything with art? Did you like to draw? Did I hear? Um, I don't. I used to like trace and draw and color, but that was when okay. I was younger. So okay. no. All right. Well, fantastic. So now that we've talked about education, we talked a little bit about your career aspirations. And um, let's just have some fun and talk about like fun things, right? So what do you like to do for fun? Um, around like the end of 2018, I started liking um, making my own music and lyrics and then I kind of hopped out of that. Okay. And um, I, start, I recently started thinking about starting my own business, but I'm not very sure like where I want to go with that. I kind of just went to the business camp and was like, okay. maybe I can do that. Yeah, you can. Uh, are you at liberty to share what type of business you'd like to go into, or you want to keep it on the low until you bust out with it and make all this money? I guess I could share. Um, uh, like, I like shoes and stuff, so okay. I went to this, um, it was like a presentation. I don't remember what day it was, but I remember it was about history, and mm -hmm. this um, kid came from a different state in the South, and he had shown that he takes shoes and he recreates them, and like spray paints them. And I didn't want to steal his idea, but I thought it was cool. And I had seen a couple YouTube videos of people who take really, really nasty, muddy shoes and make them brand new like that from the store. Mm -hmm. So I think I could do something similar, but not exactly like what the YouTube videos and the other mm -hmm. young kid did. Oh, sure, sure. So is YouTube a very common place for you to go get ideas and, and research yeah, business so I ideas? I use YouTube to like, if I don't know how to do something, mm -hmm. I could just look it up real quick and find a way to sure. do it myself. Sure. So anything else that you like to do for fun? Um, I like to go outside and be active, hang with my friends. Okay. Yeah. That's good for a 10th grader. I mean, you know, that's what, that's what you should be doing. You should be enjoying it. So, Ms. Nia, I thank you for taking your time out of your busy schedule. Thank you for just coming right from business camp over to the studios of SPNN and uh, sharing your time your talents and your energy with us here. So thank you very much for joining us on this episode of Altitude.
what an incredible show. Hearing Bailey's work in the community, in the north side of Minneapolis, uh, working for a major engineering company, and a tree hugger, a term that hadn't been heard very often. We also had young Nia Page. Nia is a very competitive uh, sports person, but is actually, we're looking forward to seeing her with a bright career. Keep in mind that shows like Altitude are here to provide you the opportunity to see what others have done and what they've decided to do with their education, their career, and what they do for fun in their lifestyle. Aspirations, we have these two young ladies here. They're both involved with a program called Aspirations, supported by the NC WIT organization. So if there are any young ladies, persons of color that are out there interested in the Aspirations program, please be sure to sign up at aspirations.minnesotastempartnership.org. We're also looking for mentors. Mentors can sign up there and also register if you want to help and support these young women as they move forward into their careers. There's a lot of options and opportunities and work that they can do in the community to make our uh, life much better. Thank you for joining Altitude and we'll see you next episode.